I am about to head 85 feet below ground into what was once voted the worst air raid shelter in the whole of the UK. But for up to 10,000 people, this was the safest place to be. As the tunnel has now reopened to the public, paranormal activity has increased. From ghostly apparitions, footsteps, the sensation of being followed, and strange noises. What haunts the Victoria Tunnel? The Victoria Tunnel was opened in 1842, carrying coal underneath the streets of Newcastle via Claremont Road. Heading past Exhibition Park, Newcastle University, the city centre of Newcastle itself, Northumbria University, and then heading out towards Shieldfield, Oosburn, before reaching boats on the River Tyne where it could be shipped around the world. However, when the money dried up, the colliery closed and as did the tunnel. The entrance was sealed up with a housing estate built on top of it, while the Glasshouse Bridge closed up pretty much the south end, leaving it pretty much unrecognisable. Everybody forgot about the tunnel, and it was just left in darkness. And then in 1939, with the threat of civilians from air raids in World War II, underground space was required, and the tunnel was remembered again. Once its location was rediscovered, new entrances were built along the tunnel and refurbished with seats, bunk beds, lighting and space for up to 10,000 people to be safe from the bombs raining down above. After the war though, these entrances were pretty much closed up, sealed up and once again the tunnel was left in darkness and forgotten about. That is with the exception of one entrance, Ouse Street, here in Ouseburn, which is currently where visitors can now go on guided tours. A house once stood on this piece of land, and the council didn't touch the entrance behind it. If this was not the case, maybe the Victoria Tunnel would be forgotten about forever. But what about the paranormal experiences in the Victoria Tunnel? In early 2018, a tour guide and sceptic Jeff Taylor was in a section of the tunnel when he claims to have seen the outline of a man watching him. The outline just slowly vanished. Whilst Jeff does not want to come on camera and talk about his experience, other tour guides have also had pretty scary things happening to them. Well, the first paranormal experience I had was uh, we were at Tarset Street. Now, Tarset Street, there was a tragedy uh, where four people lost their lives. Um, but nobody on the actual paranormal investigations knew about that. And then uh, we got to that section and we asked if anyone was there. The torch lit up. So then we asked if there was an adult there and the torch stayed dark. So then we said, well, obviously you're a child, the torch come on. Then are you a little boy? And the torch was completely off. Then are you a little girl? And the torch flashed brightly, brightly flashed. And it just so happens that above on Tarsus Street, Irene Page, she was a seven-year-old little girl. She lost her life directly above. So that was quite, uh, quite. You no, know, I was a, I was skeptical about paranormal investigations. But when that happened at Tarsus Street, you know, that probably turned me, and I said, well, you know, this is. Okay, so I've only been a tour guide for about a month or so, and I've been doing various different things. But I mostly work at the back of a tour. So I was on a tour about a month ago, maybe a bit. Oh, yeah, a little bit less than a month ago and I was sent to turn the lights off for the last bit of our tour and when I came up I thought right since I'm over here I'll get a couple of photos looking down the tunnel at the blast wall but when I went home and started looking at these photos I noticed that there was actually something leaning out of the wall and I have no idea where it was. Now when we do scares we did Halloween down in the tunnel and for five hours for two nights I stood in the pitch black near where the gents toilets were, are and we had um, we were just giving scares now the, the the people who come into the tunnel for the scares didn't get given a torch so it was lit up with tea lights so i stood in practical darkness um you know dressed up in it as a zombie and i would put my light on and give people scares however 
you know, about eight or nine times each night, about eight or nine times, I heard footsteps, footsteps at the same level um, for about five minutes, then they would just stop. Um, and that was, you know, that was quite, quite unnerving, but I'm not frightened, or it didn't scare me. It was just sort of, well, what happened there? Um, we've had a few paranormal investigations down where they've heard growling. Um, and a couple of weeks ago, one of the tour guides seen a head and shoulders uh, near the sandbags where we're going to investigate a little bit further along. That's what's actually happened um, in the tunnel. But that's not all. In 2014, a video surfaced on YouTube from the paranormal group Spirit Seekers. In the video, you can hear footsteps echoing towards them in the tunnel while everyone was stood still. So who could be haunting the Victoria Tunnel? Well, there's several possibilities for this. June 1852 was a tragic year for the colliery. On the 4th of June, John Burrell was killed when an engine boiler exploded next to him, sending him 300 feet into the air. Less than a fortnight later, the most famous story of the tunnel occurred when William Coulson, a statesman, was showing two potential buyers the inside of the tunnel. He had sent a note up to the top of the colliery via two young children, asking for no wagons to be sent down. But for whatever reasons, this note did not arrive on time, and a wagon full of rubbish to be discarded was sent straight down into the tunnel. The boy pushing on the back of the wagon lost control and lost his footing on a sleeper, sending it hurtling through the tunnel at terrifying speeds. The three men heard it coming, the two potential buyers, Benjamin and Ralph Arkless, jumped out of the way, one lying between the tracks. The other pressed himself up against the wall. They survived, but William Coulson was struck and killed instantly. In total, eight people have died at the Spittletongue's colliery from various causes of death. During the Second World War, this part of Newcastle was heavily bombed. This is Shearfield Green before the Second World War. But on the 1st of September 1941, German planes flew so low that radar did not pick them up and the air raid sirens did not go off. Many people died in Shieldfield that night. This futuristic building is the site of the old Manor's goods station. This was bombed and many people lost their lives here. On Shieldfield Green, there was an entrance to the Victoria Tunnel. Many people would seek refuge in there. But one tragic tale tells of a boy called Ben, who was 12 years old at the time. Rather than seeking refuge, he decided to stand outside this church and watch the planes fly over. He was struck and hit by shrapnel and sadly lost his life. Whether he was taken injured into the Victoria Tunnel, we will not know. Tour guide Pete gave a story of a tragic account from Tarset Street. In September of the same month, bombs had rained down on the street and although the blast stayed uncovered on the street it didn't stop a future tragedy from occurring seven-year-old irene page was playing just over here when she stumbled and fell into one of the craters upon hearing all the commotion the girl's mother managed to get a boy from a neighboring street called ernie smith to come along and help. He was a boy scout and an expert in ropes and tying knots, so he lowered himself down into the hole to find the missing girl. However, neither of them returned, and two off-duty fire officers who were nearby heard what was going on and used a ladder to go down and look for the children. When they didn't return, the fire brigade were called and they came and retrieved four bodies from the hole. When Irene had fell in, she had disturbed a pocket of poisonous gas. Once darkness fell, it was my turn. With the keys in my hand, I was going down into the Victoria Tunnel. 85 feet below ground, this was once the worst air raid shelter in the whole of the UK. So welcome to the Victoria Tunnel. Now I've got to admit, I'm feeling a little bit 
apprehensive I think is probably the word the best word for this because we are in a place well I say we literally myself in a place where uh, it's not going to be I, I'm going to describe myself as vulnerable on this one because we can't just run out of a door we can't just run out and jump in the car and drive home um, I'm going 85 feet below ground by myself and I just love some of the features of this this is obviously a second world war uh, piece now look at this you can get the camera on that yellow paint on the roof now that's obviously traditional and uh, that's a, a very obvious feature of a, a, um, an air raid shelter during the war this yellow paint obviously has chemicals in it that's uh, are designed to turn pink if for ever, ever reason there's a bomb attack down here gas is detected down here and uh, the gas detection paint that will change color so if you were a rescue worker and you came looking for people to get out of here then if that was pink I'd put a gas mask on if I were you and I probably wouldn't expect to find any people alive now let's go further on this is now oh, this is amazing this is if you've ever seen any of these features these are called blast walls um, let's go through here and I'll tell you a little bit more about what a blast wall is during the war these were designed and you'll see a few of these throughout this tunnel these were designed purely for protection um, if a bomb went off you can see there would be more gas detection paint maybe around here if a bomb went off the blast would you know naturally rip through the entire tunnel it would kill everybody from this end of the tunnel in New Street all the way down to Spittle Tons which is about two and a half miles away so it's a long way and it would just suck the air out they still use bombs that can do that today that's what a bomb does it will suck the air out of a space and uh, these blast walls were built uh, to deflect it obviously energy can't go left right left right it can't go in a straight line ignore this circle feature here this was uh, a feature added by some students I've been told in the 1970s who were doing a some sort of test down here with a laser but look at this the blast wall you've got to go left you've got to go right into the next section I love that I'm glad that the, the people who run the tunnel, the Usburn Trust, have kept all the, these original World War II features. Um, that's fantastic. I love that. Let's keep going. I'm going into a section of tunnel that's running underneath the cut bank, uh, part of Newcastle, as you can see there. You've got the gate that we're going into. A lot of people hearing noises down this section of tunnel. And it's in this particular area where the video of the spirit seekers was uh, videoed when they claimed to hear footsteps. <clears throat> Let's just go through. Now look at this. Now look at this. Now it was in this particular area where that video was recorded, I think it's beyond this blast wall. So we're now going under Lime Square. Now, the reason it is echoey in this particular section of the tunnel is because in Lime Square, a few years ago, they were, they were building um, and some of the building work disrupted part of the tunnel. So they did build this little echoey section here and it's down here where those uh, footsteps were heard. Now as you can see, I'm going to stand still. Is there anybody down here with me? Listen to that echo. Listen. Seems to go for miles. This is quite possibly the most echoey place I've ever been. And there are drips. Further ahead. Is simply because the 
there's another repair section uh, just beyond that blast wall at the end of the, the tunnel and you go into a section where the, it is a bit wet, it is a bit damp underfoot but it's stood on this particular spot where uh, spirit seekers were stood they'd been contacting what they claimed was a child um, and it ran, they think it ran from about here towards them, now I feel really cold I've all of a sudden felt really cold down here so I'm going to ask out so I'm not sure what the, um, the the levels are coming out as because it's so echoey I don't want to shout but is there anybody down here? Would you like to contact me? Look, do this with your feet. here original Victoria tunnel wall this section here is a section of a pair section was a tunnel that ran above 
my head as I get dripped on, I get splashed on. Known as the Quayside Railway. So this is a very old repair section. That ticking noise is so peculiar. It's like a clock, it's so weird. So this is obviously an old repair section. There was another tunnel and that tunnel fills up with water which essentially comes down into this tunnel. The drips coming from the Quayside Railway section of tunnel can play tricks with your mind, especially when you're alone. Next, I headed further underground, below Tarset Street, where the terrible tragedy occurred. Now what happened at Tarset Street was absolute tragedy and it breaks your heart when you, you talk about the story that happened here. But Tarsa Street is such a, a landmark point in this end of the Victoria Tunnel. In 1941, four people lost their lives pretty much above my head right now. And this section of tunnel understandably gets a lot of attention from mediums, people who come down here and have experienced things, especially with electrical objects, things that batteries drain down here in this section of tunnel. Now you're wondering why it's not tunnel, because if you look, there's the Victoria Tunnel there, going all the way back in that direction, uh, straight ahead is Ouse Street where we came in. And you can see just even with a light on the camera, just how dark that place is. But then you get to this section here, look, and you can see they've built away what we think was possibly a second world war entrance. It was going to be a second world war entrance. So you can see where they've, they've actually come into the tunnel, they've chiseled away at the roof of the tunnel and they've put like a, a metal roof, corrugated iron roof. It's quite possible this was going to be an entrance into the Victoria Tunnel now. Above my head is Tarsa Street. What's that? I'm hearing footsteps. Coming from down there. It's just drips, but I heard a thud. Anyway, I've just got this weird feeling I'm being followed. That's all. I'm all right. I'll continue. So what we know happened at Tarset Street was such a tragedy, and uh, you can clearly see that this was, you know, that they wouldn't build this these walls like this unless it was to serve some sort of purpose. Remember, they ran over budget with uh, with it. So I'm trying to think where the best place to be would be. Uh, I'm going to stand here in the middle of Tarsa Street. Now, this is built like a proper Second World War entrance, so people would have come, if this had been finished, they would have come down these stairs and they could have gone left down there or right along there. Let me just grab the torch because it's so unbelievably dark down here. So unbelievably dark. Right. Is there anybody joining me down here tonight? Let yourself be known. I mean, you absolutely no harm. I'm down here because we just want to know if you're here. We want to know that you're 
making contact with us. Why are you still down here if you're down here? Is your name Ernie? If you can sort of talk to me, maybe make a noise, could be just like a, make a noise on the wall, make a, any noise, just let me know you're down here. Maybe an orb, if you can, if that's what you, you do come down here as. Let me know you're down here. is coming from down here obviously that's just more tunnel and I can see you right down to the next blast wall and there's nothing down there but I keep hearing noises I'm not joking I keep hearing noises and I'm starting to freak me out a little bit is your name Irene are you Irene Page? Is Irene your name? Would you have been called Izzy? No, maybe not. Ernie. Ernest. favourite thing about this, this is when we enter the tunnel from this side of Tarset Street this is where the public would have been now so far they would have entered at U Street and they would have come into this bit, we are now more than 55 feet below ground so it is safe to sit here if you were doing an air raid and you came down here you can come and sit down here um, you're at a safe distance below ground now and if a bomb landed directly above us, you fingers crossed you'd be okay. 55 feet is the uh, the depth basically and this is a replica uh, Benji. Now this, this benches and these uh, bunk beds would have uh, would have gone along the full length of the tunnel pretty much uh, pretty much um, so obviously only a certain amount of people would get these then there's not enough for everyone, like I say, 10,000 people could come down here but uh, not everyone would be lucky enough to get on so maybe children, pregnant ladies, the elderly they would get priority over the bunk beds and the thing is the air raid, the air raid sirens would go off any time of day, any time of night Christmas Eve, 1 o'clock in the morning, you could be down here uh, it was unpredictable and uh, obviously if you needed a bit of sleep you would come down here. This is so creepy. You can sort of understand why this was voted the worst air raid shelter. And there's some benching here where you'd come and sit. And these, this is obviously replica. The original benching, the wood was uh, was long since gone. Now I just want to put this down here, and I want to show you something because we are now 55 feet below ground. If you look all the way down there look at this it's just tunnel nothing but tunnel what a photo that makes now we're talking a lot about the second world war history of this place, this was obviously a, uh, an air raid shelter, but uh, you know, we're not neglecting the first half of this tunnel's history. This was a wagon way, and um, as you can see, this is what it would have looked like pretty much without any World War II features. 
so it would have been a continuous tunnel. This uh, concrete floor wouldn't have been here. This would have been tracks, rail tracks, for the wagons to um, to manoeuvre on. And I'm just going to show you what a uh, what one of the wagons would have looked like. And they've actually the uh, Oosburn Trust, who run the Victoria Tunnel, have managed to get one of these. Look at that. So that's a, uh, a silhouette painted on the wall here at Tarset Street of a wagon. Now, we heard the story of William Coulson, um, the Victorian health and safety inspector who lost his life down here. He died because he was struck by a wagon flying through this tunnel. And uh, the two Arkless brothers who were, were down here with him survived because they got down on the, the on the ground between the rails and pinned themselves up against the wall. They survived. Just look at the size of it compared to um, the actual shape of the tunnel. You can imagine that coming at you at, I don't know, maybe 60, 70 miles an hour. You can pretty much see why you'd be quite dead if that hit you. Incredible. But we do get a lot of paranormal activity reported in this section of the tunnel. Torches would flick on and off. Now I've got a torch here. If you're down here, turn that torch off. I know you like to play with the torches in the Victoria Tunnel. Turn that off. Ooh, I've just had an orb. I've just had an orb. Beautiful. I love a good orb. I love a good orb. If that was you, please do that again. If you're around me, if you're in this area, please give me some sort of sign. Now, I just want to point something out. I believe that's a rumbling noise in the background of uh, a metro train, but anything down here you hear tonight, any noise, whether it's a thud, from this point onwards, That noise is not coming from above ground. We are too far now below ground. We are heading 85 feet below ground now. So if you hear a noise like a knock, a click, a bang, that noise is not coming from the ground. It is too far above us now. Road traffic does not make a noise down here. The only noise that you sometimes get down here, I've been told, is the metro, which also runs underground. Uh, maybe a few hundred meters away and you sometimes hear the faint rumbling in the distance but that is pretty much it for uh, for any noises so if you do hear anything if something gets picked up on mic and it is not me then it's not coming from uh, above ground this tunnel is beautiful I absolutely love it I absolutely love it I'm going to go and get my torch and uh Maybe ask out one more time. If you're down here and you're in this area and you'd like to sort of let me know you're down here, please just make a noise. I'm going to go and sit on the these nice little seats and simulate what it was like during World War II. I'm going to turn that off. Imagine sitting here on on these seats and you live in this part of Newcastle and the bombs are going off above and we know this area of Newcastle was quite heavily bombed a lot of people, over a thousand people in the Shieldfield area alone were made homeless just imagine how how you'd feel sitting down here with 10,000 other people if you're down here please let me know you're down here. That was you as an orb. Let me know. 
Come back. I decided to leave Tarset Street behind and move further underground. But on the way, I was adamant I'd heard footsteps behind me. I've just had a strange sensation. I've just put the torch down of being followed. I'm hearing footsteps down here. Um, the footsteps are not mine. I've stood still whilst I was walking to the next section of tunnel and uh, I can definitely sense that there was something following me, someone or something following me. Um, I've had to stop. It's, I'm currently about 85 feet below ground. Whatever was making the noise is coming from that direction behind me. Um, I don't feel it's hostile. I don't feel that something's pushing me out. I'm hearing noises all the time. At nearly half a mile into the tunnel, this is the section where many mediums have claimed to pick up on a boy killed during an air raid. A lot of people might be wondering why uh, there's no toilets down here. Well, there actually is. This is one of them. This, in fact, you can actually see these rings around here. Is there one down there? Yep, yeah, there's some down here. These are where toilets used to be when this was an air raid shelter. Um, in World War Two, and this is a replica. Oh, this is a real one. This is a real chemical toilet that people would have used. How mad is that? So this is the men's toilet, I believe. And around there is the ladies' toilet. And uh, as you can see, this is where you would come and do your business. Not the type of place you'd want to have a wee with 10,000 other people. But where I am now is a Second World War entrance. This is, uh, I'm gonna walk up here very carefully because it's, uh, it is slippy up here. But this is an 85 foot ramp that takes you up to uh, an entrance used during World War II. Now, I might sound a little bit out of breath. That's because I've climbed up an 85 foot ramp. As you can hear a metro train rumble past in the distance. We're getting closer to ground level. But this is, uh, look at this. The amount of people who drive through Newcastle, drive over Newcastle, don't even know all this is below their feet. As I go through here, I'm now climbing up. I'm now leaving the Victoria Tunnel and heading up this Second World War entrance what the f that sounded like metal on metal Here is an escape route. Uh, an emergency hatch, if you like. But look at this. 
this is the original entrance from this road into the Victoria Tunnel as you can see it's all bricked up I wouldn't say they've done a fantastic job of it look at that you can still see a railing um, and the poor people and the poor people I'm out I'm not hanging around here I'm going back in I'm going back down so people would have come down here during an air raid and down there into the Victoria Tunnel I headed back down the Crawhall Road ramp into a section of tunnel where an apparition was seen last year as a tour of 15 people left the scene. So this is where you come down into the tunnel and you either have the option of going left or going right. Look at this old graffiti as well on the walls. Now before I entered this section, this is where an apparition we talked about earlier in the show by a uh, tour guide by the name of Jeff was reported down here. So he claimed he was down here with a tour group of 15 people and he was closing this gate which for some reason is open and uh, he shone his torch down here and saw a man, or a figure anyway, stood at these sandbags down here. Now, for health and safety reasons, we can't go past these sandbags. These are here to stop people going down there. There's not much down there. We're not missing anything. Um, look at that old oh, chemical toilet again. There's nothing down there. There's literally a wall. Uh, I've been told it seals up after about 100 feet, so there's nothing to see down there. But this section of tunnel is uh, a place that is fascinating. Now I'm just looking for the... on the wall. Here somewhere there's... Where is it? There's two features on this wall that fascinate me. One is this. Look at that. A cross. Now the reason that cross is here is because we are on consecrated ground. We are directly below the Church of St. Dominic's which lies 85 feet... A oh, noise. 85 feet above my head. But also this. Now this is what we... I've been trying to work out for a while with research what this could be. Now there's definitely names inscribed on this piece of concrete. And the tunnel originally said this could be the early form of toilet graffiti because we are in a, a ladies toilet. There is a toilet facilities here. And was this people messing around? Now you can't really make out it's hard to see but there are names down there and one theory that one medium has put to us is that that is uh, the names of people who died down here now we know william coulson died down here in 1852 in, in an accident now nobody really knows who is supposed to haunt this tunnel and this is what's really confusing is it william coulson or is it something from a more recent part of history what do these names have as a link to the Victoria Tunnel. Keep your noises, I think that's a drip. We know people died on the surface above us. Shieldfield was one of the worst hit areas. Shieldfield is probably about, if there was no wall there, sealing off the tunnel, probably another three minute walk away. But we know people died all over town. The bombs rained everywhere. I'm hearing booms again. Now, oh, 
these people who died maybe before they got here remember if, if an area siren's gone off this is the safest place to be if you were killed or you were you know really badly injured upon the surface you would have been taken down here 100 percent there's a nurse's station down here there's people who could work on you give you first aid and you're on consecrated land you're this i don't think this is toilet graffiti personally it's literally centimeters away from a religious symbol across because we are in consecrated land so people would have come down here and they would have been worried that um the house wouldn't the house wouldn't even be there when they went back up this is essentially where you'd sit and pray and if you were religious as a lot of people would be in in the in the 1940s this would be a place of Noises. This would be a place of significance to you. My torch is uh, flickering. We're going to turn it off and back on again. There we go. Let's uh, ask out. Now we do know the name of one person who died trying to get into the Victoria Tunnel. His name was Ben. Ben, are you down here? Is your name Ben? Shut the front door. Ben, did you die trying to get into the Victoria Tunnel? Were you, were you killed before you got to the Victoria Tunnel? Are you William Coulson? The man who died when this place was a wagon way in the 1850s. Were you hit by a wagon and killed? We don't actually know the exact spot in the tunnel where William died. It was just an estimate that he walked about a mile in. So we don't know where his death site would be. My guess is that it's further down that end of the tunnel, but we don't know for sure. Is your name on this piece of concrete? Let me put my torch down a sec. There we go. Now there's the metro train going past. You're going to hear it go in a second. Don't worry, it's not coming into this section of tunnel. It's about 200 metres away. Ben. Are you B. Turner? One of the names I can make out on, on here. If you didn't die in Victorian times, did you die later on? Did you die in the tunnel? Maybe you died nearby, outside the tunnel? Guys. I'm hearing all kinds of noises down here. I know some of it is drips from the fact that the ceiling roof is, that the tunnel roof is um, quite damp. But some of it I don't think is fluid. I think some of it is solid. Let's try one more time. William, are you down here? Are you Ernie or 
Or is, is your name Ben? One thing I have noticed is the battery on my camera is now... I think it is time I left whatever's down here in peace. I'm gonna leave you in peace unless this metro train is disruptive. I wish you no harm. We're here out of respect. I will leave you in peace. So we're out the Victoria Tunnel. That was quite some experience. What a place. What a place. Heard some bangs, footsteps. I don't know what's come out on my can't wait to have a listen to back to the footage but this place is amazing it really is <laughs>